Hi guys, so my Warhammer 40k chess set is coming along nicely. And as you can see from this little sneak peek, the Orc army is getting near completion. So I was looking around to see what kind of figure I think would work well for the Queen. And I decided on Zodgrod Wartsnagger. Awesome name there. And those lovely people over at Goldfish Blue Limited kindly sent me one. And here's their eBay guys, go and check them out. It's a small family run business in the UK. But they do ship worldwide. As you can see, they do a wide range of Games Workshop products, and they do a lot of the old or discontinued classic models. So yeah, go check them out guys, link in the description, and see what they've got to offer. So the main reason for choosing this dude was the, uh, well, the hair. I just thought it looked awesome. And obviously not many of the uh, the Orcs have hair. Um, well, if any. Um, yeah, so obviously using the instructions, but obviously it's quite explanatory, because there's only a few bits for this, which is pretty cool. And yeah, just a case of cutting the bits out. So this style of uh, painting really has been a game changer for me. As this chess set is something I've wanted to make for the past, well, couple of years I guess. Almost since I had this channel. But obviously the thing that put me off was the thought of painting 32 miniatures. When, well, basically it would take me 3-4 hours to paint one miniature. And I wouldn't be happy with the results. So yeah, so this slap chop uh, painting technique really has been a game changer for me. Because I absolutely love, uh, love painting miniatures now. So the thought of painting 32 miniatures, um, whereas it would have scared me, it's now exciting me because I can't wait to get, uh, well, to get them done and do the process, as I really am enjoying this sort of style. So obviously before I can paint, it is just a case of cleaning up any sort of mould lines um, and whether, whether these were obviously attached to the sprues. So yeah, just going around using my, uh, well, my rather dull um, scalpel here. It's certainly seen better days as I've used this for quite some time now. Um, I do have another blade that I use when I'm cutting things up, just sort of to get nice, clean, sort of uh, fresh cuts. So yeah, this scalpel's been going for ages, and it is my sort of go-to, um, well, go-to scraper, I guess. So that's the bits all ready to glue. Um, yeah, and I'm using obviously this like cement glue with a little brush. Uh, just gets really nice. It gets in all the, the right areas, and yeah, seems to work wonders. So the bit goes together reasonably well. Um, obviously, it's just a case of me working out which way round. But obviously, because this is well, this dude is going to be turned into well, uh, well, a kind of a dudess. Obviously, as a queen, um, I love the hair. Obviously, on the head, uh, but on the uh, the chin, chin, uh, not so much. Obviously, because well, I don't want him to be a uh, <laughs> a male queen. Um, so yes, obviously, taking it off, nice trimming it, uh, nice and carefully. Um, so this bit of hair that I'm actually taking off. I can then use for well the back of the head just to give them well, even more hair. So again, a bit of tidying up where I have sort of cut off the uh, the old beard there, just to give it a bit of a well, a bit of a sh nice shave, get it nice and smooth. So I have recently become aware that there are no female orcs, um, and new orcs are well kind of made-ish uh, by orcs dying apparently and spores leaving their body um, and turning into new orcs. Um, well, that's what I've heard. So, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Uh, but, yeah, so as far as I'm aware, there are no female orcs because the male ones die and, yeah, bits fall off and <laughs> make some new ones. Um, but, obviously, in this case, because I'm making a, a queen um, to go on my chessboard, that's kind of why the, this one is going to be turned into, um, well, the first female orc in Warhammer 40k, I guess. So, obviously, to be a female, um, I'm going to give them some boobies. Um, and these ones, I actually cut off a model that I did some time ago. Um, it was all to do with armour. And, in fact, obviously, for D&D, &D, you can have a male character and a female character. They can both pick up plate mail, um, but one of them could be very scantily dressed. And it wasn't the male. So, yeah, so these little parts have come off from that figure. There was a video out there somewhere, guys. I'm going to go and check that out. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's why they're kind of already pre-painted because yeah, they were on a model that I was never going to use so I cut them off. So the only problem I did have with this figure and that is obviously the feet. They're attached to a base. Well, I say attached. They're part of the base. Um, and as with, obviously because I'm going to be using these on clear bases, um, yeah, it wasn't going to work too well having these feet obviously on this base. So it was a case of carefully cutting around them and then as you can see, just sort of trimming areas up, trying to sort of cut in between the toes, just so they're all visible. Um, so yeah, so just had to take quite a bit of time and care in doing this. 
Um, so yeah, just because of purity, I didn't want to have obviously any kind of bases on these. As you'll see from the previous videos, all my orcs and obviously any of the space marines that I do um, won't be on any kind of bases other than my clear bases because the chest set board that I've made, um, well, as you might have seen in, in the, uh, the little sneak peek, it gets illuminated, um, as in there's lights in it, which can be, uh, well, I can change the colours on the lights. But we'll go into that in another video. So yeah, kind of got there in the end with the uh, with the feet, so I was pretty pleased with how they came out. Um, and yeah, don't look too bad at all. As you can see, there are obviously some gaps underneath the, uh, the feet, uh, and that's obviously purely where they were on the base. So it is to sort of fill those bits in. So using the good old green stuff, um, as this is this is kind of my go-to sort of stuff for filling in gaps, just because it's easy to use and obviously dries rock hard, and then can be sanded or drilled or well whatever you need to do to it really. As well as using it on the feet, I also use it to sort of blend in the um, well the boobies, um, just to make them look like they're a bit more saggy, because uh, obviously this is a um, well it's an orc that I don't want to have nice pert ones um, so yeah using the green stuff I can sort of just obviously try and make the uh, the boobies look more like they're well part of the figure so yeah it was all sort of going really well there um, so the stuff blends in really nicely do have to sort of keep wetting it every now and then just because then it does sort of smooth out rather than sort of be dragged around um, but yeah I'm starting to use more and more of this green stuff and getting a bit better with it each time I think the other thing I needed to change with this figure, and that was the uh, the position of the um, the weapon. Um, just because obviously the, the, these figures, they are going to be quite close to each other. So they can't really have large weapons, well, poking into other sort of um, players or figures. So yeah, so with the weapon, I wanted to change the position so it wasn't sort of being pointed outwards. Uh, but they were going to hold it upwards. Um, so this required a little bit of cutting here and there. Many of the wires as well, because obviously the position I'm going to have this in, the wires would look a little bit silly. Um, they wouldn't be sort of like dangling down. It would be like they're um, sort of like solid wires. So yeah, taking them off um, and just moving them to where they would look so much more, well, more natural. While I'm gluing that all together and uh, filling in any gaps with green stuff, I just want to say a big shout out and thank you to all my sponsors for helping support the channel. Um, as well as obviously get to see behind the scenes uh, pictures and videos of what I'm currently working on. And more importantly, obviously they can get to see more of what's going on with the chess set, which is pretty cool. And I thank my sponsors, Easy Roll of Dice and Any Cubic. So yeah, so filling in any little gaps now, because obviously when I've moved the arm, well, there is going to be a gap because it's the, the arm is now not in the position it was, uh, was originally meant to be. Uh, but yeah, good old green stuff comes in again and makes that easy to, to fill. And then one last important job to do before we start painting, and that is obviously to start drilling out the uh, the barrel. Just because I know how important this is to well, many people out there. That if you don't drill the barrel, then you're a heathen. Um, so there we go. Yep, drill out that barrel. And then we're ready for painting. So obviously primed in black. Uh, but then just before I went to start painting them, I kind of realised that obviously with the king, he's got this sort of, um, well, this little thing poking out the back of his backpack that kind of looks like a crown. And as I didn't want to sort of put like a, a crown on the other uh, queen, I thought I'd put this sort of spanner and hammer, um, just to help distinguish that these are the king and the queen, and just your, no your normal knobs and all that. So yeah, the good old painting technique that's got me loving this, and obviously making me be able to paint this thing. Uh, priming in black, dry brush with some grey, let that dry, then do some dry brushing with white. So when I do the dry brushing, it's not zenith all priming, it's basically I'm dry brushing all over. Um, whereas obviously Zenithal is from, well, 45 degrees because uh, it's meant to obviously be the sort of the sunlight hitting the model. So yeah, dry brush all over. And then my go-to green for obviously all my orcs has been the Plague Bearers um, Flesh Contrast Paint. Uh, just because I absolutely love how this looks. It goes on really well, it dries really well, and yeah, it's just a lovely colour for an orc. Well, in my eyes, it's a lovely colour for an orc. And obviously, because I want all these uh, orcs to look like they're from the same clan, I am painting them all in the sort of the same sort of fashion, uh, same sort of colours, just so their colour scheme does look um, well similar. So yeah, plague bearers flesh for the green skin, absolutely love it. So as the title says, guys, this technique of painting really has been a game changer for me. It's taken me from someone who used to hate painting miniatures, and well, the few that I did paint would take a good three, four hours or more 
As I say, I, I never enjoyed any of the experience of doing it, and the models just came out looking pants. Um, so yes, yeah, so I've gone from that to now absolutely loving painting. Uh, love the whole process, love the technique, love how it looks afterwards. Uh, but just as important as all that, the time. Uh, this miniature, um, about half an hour, give or take. Um, obviously, it doesn't include the uh, the priming and the dry brushing. Uh, mainly because obviously when you prime it, obviously it only takes a few seconds to prime it, but then you have to leave it for, well, I'd only leave mine for a good 20 minutes, half hour, um, and then dry brushing, similar sort of thing, dry brushing the grey, leave it for 5, 10 minutes, dry brushing the white, leave it for another, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. Um, so then the actual painting itself, obviously using the contrast paints, speed paints, green stuff, different inks, whatever it is that you use, um, but that's the bit that's only taking me about half an hour. Uh, which is pretty awesome. And obviously, if you've seen some of my other recent videos, uh, painting one miniature, obviously still quick, 30 minutes-ish, but if I batch paint them, like I did with the Orc Pawns, um, yeah, I did a sort of like a set of eight pawns in, what, about two hours, two, three hours? Um, so obviously that breaks down to each one being sort of like 15, 20 minutes-ish, which, uh, which is pretty awesome. So especially when obviously you, I'm trying to paint 32 miniatures, uh, for the chess pieces, but not only that I am thinking already about other chess pieces So obviously I'm going with the Orcs uh, against Space Marines But then I might well do other sort of teams that can go on my chess set just to sort of vary vary up really uh, Which is pretty cool and I say I'm really excited about painting miniatures. So yeah, absolutely loving it So for the few paints that aren't contrast paints and this is generally obviously the metal ones um, there's a few other colours that I do that I haven't got contrast paints of. Um, but yeah, so anything sort of metallic, obviously I sort of like paint, well, with the colour that I need. Um, and then once it's all dried and done, I'll go over the whole thing with a, a light brown wash, just to sort of dirty it up. Um, but yeah, so this figure, nice and quick, loved how it looks. Painted the same sort of style, look, colour scheme as all my other orcs. Um, so yeah, so when, I, when these are all done, these are going to look so cool. And yeah, I can't wait to play the game with, uh, well, with my children. I'm going to play a uh, good old game of chess. Um, not that I've played for quite a few years, so I'm going to be rusty. Uh, they may well beat me, but uh, we're going to have fun regardless. Maybe I'll just make it into a drafts set. Um, so much easier than chess. So that's the figure just about all painted now. And say so the last sort of step that I normally do... And that is to go over with a light brown wash. Um, just because obviously all the areas that I've done, obviously the, um, the metallic paints, there's a few colours there, say, that I haven't got speed paints for. They all look a little bit too sort of clean and neat and crisp. Um, so yeah, the good old wash just helps to dirty things down and obviously adds plenty of shadows. Um, and yeah, it makes everything look a bit more, well, a bit more weathered, a bit more rugged. Um, and definitely in my eyes, a lot better looking. As mentioned earlier, I put all my figures on clear bases. Um, and yeah, the clear bases I get, I get them all from Fluid 3D Workshop. There is a link in the description, guys. They do a whole variety of bases, not just clear ones. They do the normal sort of black plastic ones. And yeah, all kinds of sizes, shapes, thicknesses, and all the rest of it. Uh, but as you obviously can see in my one, I've got a little magnet in mine. Uh, just because obviously my little figures or the chess pieces are all going to be magnetised and obviously fix onto the board nicely. Okay, let's have a look at this queen in all her glory. Okay guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment, all that good stuff. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.